Greetings, minions. I am Dr. Krankenstein. And this is my faithful lab assistant, Morby. Well, what's left of your lab assistant? What'd you do with the rest of me? <laughs> Aren't we a mischievous little brain today? Wow, you didn't yell at me. I have to admit, Doc, you seem to be in a rather jubilant mood lately. Indeed I am. Nothing lifts my spirits more than pointing out the bad science in television shows. Oh, your favorite hobby. <laughs> well, besides universal domination, of course. True. Okay, I understand that science fiction has to involve fabricated stories. But why must the science be so erroneous? For instance, today we shall concentrate on this example from the movie Star Trek Generations. In this movie, there is a character named Dr. Tolian Sarin, who is an evil genius extraordinaire. Much like myself, if I don't mind mentioning. Dr. Sarin's scheme involves launching a rocket from the planet Viridian 3, aimed straight for the planet's star, with the intention of causing the star to go supernova. Wow, you have to admire the guy's style. I agree, my gray-mattered companion. He has a wonderfully evil mind. However, this scene is full of so many inaccuracies that it's difficult to appreciate the scene. Watch with what appears to be a conventional rocket rises to the top of the atmosphere and then instantly the star goes dark. Now, there are actually two problems here. Let's see if we can spot them both. A conventional rocket would take days or weeks, maybe even months to reach the star. Yeah, well, that's annoying, but maybe the rocket had some sort of stealthy warp thing that allowed it to instantly get to the sun much faster than we could nowadays. Perhaps, Morby, and I am willing to excuse this problem, because it is science fiction after all, right? But there is no excuse for the second problem. Can you spot it, Morby? Now, this one is pretty obvious, I think. Does it have something to do with the speed of light? Exactly. Good thinking, Morby. You see, this is a representation of our star system. We call it the solar system because our star is called Sol. Now, this blue line here represents what we like to call the Goldilocks zone. It's not too hot, not too cold for liquid water, which means life. Now, we would have to assume that Viridian 3, because it supports life, would have to fall within its star's Goldilocks zone. Hence, it would be a similar distance from Earth to the Viridian star. So, what does that tell us, Morby? Oh, right, because here on Earth, it takes around eight minutes for the sun's light to impact Earth. Exactly, Morby. So how is it that everybody standing on the planet of Viridian 3, namely Captain Picard and Dr. Sauron and everybody in the saucer section of the Enterprise, is able to see the star go black almost immediately when the lack of light should take at least 10 minutes to become noticeable? But there is yet one more preposterous thing that follows shortly after. The shock wave from the exploding star would be traveling at much less than the speed of light, hence it would take much longer than 10 minutes to reach the planet, possibly even days. So they shorten things up to make it all fit in the movie. What's the big deal? What? Mormy, are you out of your mind? Doc, my mind is all that's left of me, so that's not really possible. Good point. However, I need scientifically literate minions so that when I take over the world, then I can use our resources to take over the universe. And how am I going to accomplish that when our Hollywood movies and our television shows are constantly bombarding our youth with false scientific information? And before we go, Morby, have you checked to see if there are any relevant email messages waiting for us? Any questions we can answer from our viewers? Yes, there is one email that is definitely relevant, and it comes from Tony in Portland, Oregon. He asks, I see in movies that many stars have names. What is the name of our star? Excellent question. In fact, we, we touched on this just earlier. You see, the star that our planet orbits, the name of that star is called Sol. Hence, we get the word the solar system. That's the name of our star system. However, there is only one solar system. Any other star system out there is called something else, such as the Viridian system or the Vega system. 
but there's only one solar system. So if you ever watch a science fiction show where they talk about another star and another planet as having a, being part of a solar system, then they are using incorrect terminology. Now I want to rewatch all of those science fiction movies and see which ones got it wrong. Well, we are out of time for this episode. Please join us again for the next one.